Hi everyone, my name is Travis M. Grant and I am a costume designer by trade. So, my process for the main stage shows at Main Stage Music Theater is anywhere from 10 months to a year. I start by reading the script multiple times. If you're looking at doing a high concept show, you need to have really in-depth conversations with directors about their vision for the show. And then it comes down to research. I am a weirdo, I love doing the research. I know that there are so many people that just go, ugh, oops, not me. I wanna read about world history and clothing history specifically and see what I can glean from that information to kind of heighten the design and really make it interesting. My process here and at Main State and other places is to work with a cutter draper, who in most of the shows that I do is Candace Chase. And she starts out with a muslin where she drapes the fabric over the dress form and is able to kind of figure out what the shape is. So this is the corset for um, one of the tarts in Tuck Everlasting. And she's able to look at where it hits on the body, how it needs to fit over the hip, if it needs to have fullness in areas to accommodate dancing. And she drapes the muslin on the form, kind of sketches out what the shape is, where things hit. So from there, I figure out kind of what my fabrics are. And as you can see, I like a lot of color and texture. And I figure out kind of the bodice center front, the middle front, the side front, if I want to add a lot of different layers, piping, other things that need to be used on these clothes, and then kind of work with Candace to figure out where that is to make sure that she's got all the pieces to kind of parse things out and give it the look that I imagine in my head. And then from there, we will cut the garment and build it. I like weird colors. Like there are a lot of these off greens, which Candace calls slime green, which I love because it's true. It's like a weird slimy snot green. It's so unattractive up close, but on stage it's magic. You know, once you get it under the right light, it's brilliant. I will find one fabric that I'm in love with for a certain look. In this case, there's this beautiful plaid dupioni silk that has these like rich eggplants and kind of avocado green and really beautiful colors. And then I go from there. I look at all of those colors and I say, how can I build on this? How can I make this into a complete look? So I had the silk. I found a velvet that was similar. I found other fabrics that were in that same world and in that color palette and kind of built the garments around this one fabric. So these are pieces from Mary Poppins. This is Mrs. Corey and Fanny Corey, one of her daughters. And this is the fabric that I was talking about where this little tiny piece of silk inspired the whole garment. It's well tailored, it was built for the actor, and it was really kind of a touching, wonderful moment because she came up to me during tech and she said, I feel beautiful. I have a really hard time finding clothes that fit. And it's rare that I can ever find something that makes me feel beautiful. And for me, that was, like, I knocked it out of the park on that. Because as great as the garment looks, if the actor is confident and feels good in what they're wearing, they're gonna give a great performance. And that is such a huge part of what I do. I can't hinder what an actor does. I have to be able to enhance what an actor does. I'm a bigger guy. I'm not exactly your normal actor body. And after a while, you know, going to auditions and hearing, you know, oh, you're just a little too fat for what we need. I said, you know what, I, I don't need this. This has been fun, but I'm gonna put all my attention into design. You don't make the actor fit the clothing. You make the clothing fit the actor. So I can buy a man's suit off the rack, but if he is portly and on the shorter side, it's gonna be a hard time fitting the suit, but that's my job. So we have a wonderful actress who is very petite, Geraldine Shattuck. And she was playing Cinderella's stepmother, and she needed to look over the top, larger than life, and she's five foot, five foot one perhaps. She's tiny, tiny, adorable. So I wanted this beautiful tailored suit that would look just over the top, look huge. These big leg of mutton sleeves. And this is something that I worked with Candace to build for Jared. So we decided that was where we wanted to put our time and effort, is into building pieces for these people that you can't buy. And that is the best way to use your time and money on a show like that. We 
we build them in the way that they can be taken apart quickly and put back together for ease of fitting. It is my goal here, every time I do a show, to try and build the stock. It may be in the future that I'll pull pieces from Mary Poppins and use it for Hello Dolly because it's roughly the same time period and I can make it work. You can see here on the inside of this garment that it has exposed seams and there's not a full lining in it, which helps with fittings overall and with reuse. We build extra seam allowance in at the center back zipper, which is one of the easiest alterations that you can do. And we also build in at the underarm and the shoulder, extra here. The human body is different and it's not a straight line. So people are gonna have curves in different places and swerves in different places that will, you know, change the way that a garment fits. And for me, fit is very important. You never wanna send somebody out on stage looking like a dump truck. Nobody wants that. A lot of my job too is storytelling through clothing. Other than actors, clothing is frequently the only other moving piece on stage. Fabric will swirl, feathers will bounce, and those are things that draw the eye and help to create the story because it tells you something about that person. If they're wearing a fussy hat with big bouncy feathers, you know something about that person. If they're wearing distressed rags that kind of creep and move on their own when the actor is barely moving, that tells you something. So as a designer, I'm telling a story just the same way that the actors, the director, the choreographer, the musicians, everybody else is telling the story. And that's kind of what we're all doing in collaborating, is telling this one story. And it's, it's fantastic. Audience members, and frequently actors too, come into a piece that is essentially finished. You know, they see the design set that's already being constructed, and they see that there are clothes that are already finished, and they think, oh, it just happens, without knowing that there is a legion of designers and technicians who have been working for months and months trying to put this show up. I always strive, when I'm designing here or Main State or anywhere, to give the absolute best quality that I can. And I look at each production and say, what if this is the last show that I do? Is this my legacy? Is this what I want to leave with the world? I would say a solid 98 to 99% of our industry has been decimated by this pandemic. Broadway is shut down, regional theaters have shut down, school programs are being shut down. But ultimately, until we can find a vaccine or safer ways of performing, it's going to be hard for our business to bounce back. Reach out to your local companies, reach out to the Waterville Opera House, to Main State Music Theater, to whatever arts organization is meaningful to you and say, how can I help you? Say, can I make masks? Is there anything I can do to help you with cleaning your space and setting things up? Can I donate money? Is there anything that I can do that will help you get through this? And that's really all any of us can do right now is just reach out and try and help. If you can, if you are able, in whatever way possible, reach out, be a helping hand, be a lifeline for these organizations. They've brought you joy and they've helped, you know, create this beautiful arts scene in your community. It's time for you to help them.